Hello everyone and welcome to today's sixth grade ELA lesson. I created a PowerPoint that I'm going to share with you all and the topic for today is going to be claims and supporting evidence. So breaking news, a giant orange five feet wide was found in Australia. The world's largest orange with an incredible circumference of five feet was found yesterday morning in Sydney, Australia. Fun fact, the average circumference of an orange is 9.42 inches, which makes this rare find so incredible. Hmm, believable or not? Is this breaking news or is it fake news? This article right here is actually fake news. When we're viewing resources, it's always important to remember that not all evidence or what seems like evidence is actually credible. It's always good to research to double check. So I had actually created this and while it may look legit, it really isn't. This is actually fake news. And so even when I give out certain data, such as, oh, it's 9.42 inches, that might not mean that it's actually necessarily true. Again, not all evidence is actually true not what seems like evidence is true. So if we're comparing these two, these look very similar. This is the one that we just read about, about the giant orange five feet wide being found in Australia. And then we have another one with the same picture, but it says three compelling reasons to include citrus when planning meals. If we read this one, it says, including citrus in one's meals provides vitamin C and other nutrients, boosts heart health, and can be a great source of fiber including citrus fruits like oranges when planning meals. Okay, so the difference between these two, besides that the words are a little bit different, is that the one on our right is fake news, whereas the one on our left is real news. This is credible. Now it's always good to remember that not all evidence is credible, and so we always have to research in order to double check. Okay, today's goal for our lesson is that we can evaluate the main points, reasons, and evidence in an argument and distinguish between supported and unsupported claims. So for your materials, you will need paper and pencil, as well as informational books if you have some. On today's agenda, we will first be going over some vocabulary. Next, we'll go over some examples of arguments, claims, reasons, and evidence. Following that, we will identify supported versus unsupported claims. Next, we'll identify whether the passage is credible. Then we'll go over some breaking news, credible or not. And finally, we will recap and conclude our lesson. So for our vocabulary of today, we have five words to start off with, which are persuade, which means to convince someone of one's own point of view, remembering that there's always gonna be at least two sides to the issue, such as getting a dog versus not getting a dog, or getting a raise in the allowance versus not getting a raise, or dogs are better than cats versus cats are better than dogs. Our next vocabulary word is argument, which is the reasons that are given to persuade another person of one's own point of view. And argument is composed of several components, which are claim plus the reasons, evidence, and details. So a claim is the person's point of view or opinion. It's kind of like a statement. For example, dogs are better than cats. That could be one person's claim. Another person could claim, no, cats are better than dogs. So there's different perspectives, different opinions. Another vocabulary word is reasons. And reasons are an explanation for why the person believes his or her own point of view is correct. These can use keywords such as because, since, as a result, and other words too. Our last word is evidence which is proof or facts that support the person's point of view. All right, so let me give an example. So our example could be in terms of recycling. If my argument is recycling should be required, that's the claim portion, because it reduces pollution and is good for the environment. Those are my reasons and evidence. So for my claim, I have an opinion statement, which is everyone should be required to recycle. The reasons are, well, recycling is good for the environment, reduces the trash in landfills, such as the one shown in the picture here, and recycling is easy to do. And I provide some evidence for each of my reasons. For my reason of recycling be good for the environment, I say that 
Well, it reduces the need to use more raw materials since we can reuse what we recycle, and it involves less air and water pollution. Then for my second reason of recycling how it reduces trash and landfills, my evidence could be, well, items that are recycled get reused or repurposed, avoiding the landfills. And then for my third reason, that recycling is easy to do, my evidence could be, well, anyone can start recycling, and recycling bins are fairly common. Furthermore, people can put recyclable items in a large cardboard box and non-recyclables in a bag. So all of this makes recycling fairly easy to do. So again, I had my argument, which is my claim, my claim plus my reasons and evidence, as well as my claim, everyone should be required to recycle, and my reasons and evidence. So next we're going to talk about credibility. Credibility is whether a claim is trustworthy or reliable. So again, just because something may have like specific numbers, like for example, how that orange was given, oh, you know, the average orange has a circumference of 9.42 inches. That in itself was a fact, but combined with the news of, oh, but we found an orange that was five feet in circumference that part was unreliable. So it's always good to realize that even when specific numbers may be given, the information may still be false. So it's always good to double check and use your research tools first to double check the facts to see whether those are really facts or not. So that's talking about credibility. So credibility again is whether a claim is trustworthy or reliable. Then there's claims supported by reasons and evidence, which are true statements based on facts and or research. For example, Snow leopards are endangered species because their population has declined by about 20% over the past 16 years. That's a fact that you can look up. It has some credibility behind it. Same with this one. Strawberries have a lot of seeds. In fact, they have about 200 seeds. Again, it's something you can research to see if it's true or false, and this one is true. It is a claim that's credible and is supported by reasons and evidence. Now, in contrast, we have claims not supported by reasons and evidence. These can be opinion statements a lot of the time without supporting facts or research, or they may have facts that look credible, but really aren't, so they're like false facts. So for example, ice cream is the best dessert because it is my favorite treat, or everyone should own a dog because dogs are the most friendly out of all the animals. You can see that this one is false because dogs may not necessarily be the most friendly. Maybe a hamster is more friendly, things like that. And then making lemon bars is the easiest thing in the world. Well, for some people, it might not be the easiest thing. Maybe making cookies is easier or something. So you can see that these are all kind of opinion statements. They're not really backed by the facts or research. So now we are going to transition into an activity that I like to call supported versus unsupported claims. And for this activity, we will be identifying whether the following claims are supported by credible reasons and evidence or not supported. So I'll be helping you with these, which is called guided practice. And then later we'll have some independent practice. Okay. So identify whether the following claim, this claim right here, is supported by credible reasons and evidence or not supported. Okay. So the claim is green is the best out of all the other colors. My reasons and evidence are green is my favorite color and many important things are green, such as grass and trees. We have to deter determine if the claim green is the best out of all the other colors is credible or not credible based on our reasons and evidence. So if you said it is not credible, you are correct. That's because it's giving an opinion. These reasons and evidence are actually opinions, like green is my favorite color. And then this one is a fact. Many important things are green, such as grass and trees, but important is very relative, which means, well, some people may think of it as important, others may not, others may be somewhere in between. So it's kind of up in the air. So that's why this would actually be not credible. Green is the best out of all the other colors is not credible because maybe another person thinks that blue is the best out of all the other colors or purple or things like that. So not credible. What about this one? Let's identify whether this claim is credible or not credible based on the evidence. So the claim is some computers 
are at least 70 years old. The reasons and evidence are, the first computer was invented in the 1940s. So credible or not credible. Remember, you can use research to help you as well. So if you said that this is credible, then you are correct. And it's credible because, so it says the first computer was invented in the 1940s. And if we're thinking 1940 all the way to 2020, well, that's even more than 70 years. So that does complete the claim of some computers are at least 70 years old. So the claim is true, it is correct, and is thus credible. And research will also point to the same thing. All right, time for some independent practice. This is going to be the same activity, but I'm going to let you pause the videos in between to determine if the claims are credible or not credible. All right, so identify whether this claim is credible or not credible. So the claim is that Maddie and Sammy are triplets. For the reasons and evidence, we have a triplet is a group of three siblings. Maddie's and Sammy's family is made up of four people, dad, mom, Maddie, and Sammy. So again, we're looking at the claim and the reasons and evidence to determine if this claim is credible or not credible. So is Maddie and Sammy are triplets credible or not credible? I'm gonna let you pause the video and you can use research if you want, as well as the reasons and evidence to figure out whether our claim is credible or not credible. So you can pause the video. So if you said that it is not credible, then you're correct. And did you notice the error? There's an error that I put on purpose. So I said Maddie and Sammy are triplets. But according to our reasons and evidence and facts, a triplet is a group of three siblings. Hmm. And the family is made up of four people, dad, mom, Maddie, and Sammy. It says Maddie and Sammy are triplets, but triplets are three people. And Maddie and Sammy make only two. So that's the error. So that also proves that it is not credible. If it was credible, then I would have listed Maddie and Sammy and someone else, another sibling, but I didn't. And triplet is a group of three siblings. Here we only have two. So that's another reason why it's good to fact check. And this claim is not credible. So if you got that correct, awesome job. All right, let's try another one. Claim, the state of Arizona has several different nicknames for, for the reasons and evidence. Arizona is called the Copper State. Arizona is also known as the Grand Canyon State. Is this credible or not credible? And again, you can use your research if you need to. And you can pause the video and figure out if it's credible or not credible for this claim. So if you said that it is credible, you are correct. If you researched it, then you know that it is indeed true that Arizona is called the Copper State as well as the Grand Canyon State. Those are indeed some different nicknames for the state of Arizona, which makes this credible. It is backed by facts and research. Let's try another one. This claim is the month of February has the fewest days out of all the other months. Reasons and evidence. February usually has 28 days, except for on leap year. On leap year, February has 29 days. So you can use your research and your informational books if needed, if relevant, to find out whether our claim is credible or not credible. So again, you can pause your video and write down if the claim is credible or not credible based on your research and facts. Awesome, all right, this one is credible. And if you used your research, you know that February really does have 28 days, except for leap year, which is an exception, because on leap year, February has 29 days. 
So the claim is indeed credible that the month of February has the fewest days out of all the other months because most other months have 30 or 31 days. February is kind of like the exception. All right, let's try another. This claim is coral reefs are underwater ecosystems. I have three pieces of reasons and evidence. I have coral reefs are found in the ocean. An ecosystem is a community of living and non-living organisms. And the pictures on the left and right are of coral reefs. And these pictures really are of coral reefs too. This piece is for sure correct about the pictures. All right, so you get to determine whether the claim coral reefs are underwater ecosystems is credible or not credible based on the reasons and evidence. So I'll let you pause the video and write down whether it's credible or not credible. And re remember, you can use your research. So this one is going to be credible. So awesome job if you got that, because coral reefs really are found in the ocean. And an ecosystem really is a community of living and non-living organisms. And like I said previously, the pictures in left and right really are of coral systems. Awesome job. All right. So now we're going to try another one. This claim says a dorse is a rare animal that looks like a mix between a large dog and a horse. So for the reasons and evidence, dorses are rare and are only found in the eastern parts of Asia and seven different species of the dorse have been found over the past 20 years. So is this claim credible or not credible? Remember, use your research to find out. You can pause the video and write down credible or not credible based on your research. So if you said this is not credible, you are correct because a dorse actually does not exist. So if you looked it up using your research, you realize that a dorse actually does not exist. This is a creature that I actually made up. So awesome job if you got that one correct. Alrighty, so now we're gonna do a new activity where we get to identify whether a passage is credible. So we'll go through some guided practice first. So I will read the passage, then you will be able to write down your claim, the claim of the passage with the authors claiming, their reasons and evidence, and whether it's credible, not credible, and why. So I'll help you with the first one. So the passage is, monarch butterflies usually live for only a short amount of time. Typically they live for about two to six weeks, although some can live up to eight or nine months. Monarch butterflies go through four stages in their lives, from egg to larva to pupa to adult. So first, we're going to look at what the author's claim was. This is the very first sentence. So monarch butterflies usually live for only a short amount of time. That's what the author is claiming. So we've got monarch butterflies usually live for only a short amount of time. Now for the reasons and evidence, the author gives that they live two to six weeks because it says right here they live for about two to six weeks. Then he also says, although some can live up to eight or nine months. So that's why we have a few live eight to nine months. So those are the reasons and evidence that the author is providing. Now as to whether this is credible, not credible, or why, this one is credible. I researched these facts and they are very detailed facts, but just because they're detailed facts doesn't mean that they're true. I had to make sure that I researched them and used credible websites to find the information. So again, this is credible and this information is true. All right, so now let's try another one. Science is my favorite subject in school. Science is the best subject because we get to do cool things like experiments to test out our hypotheses. These are always really fun and I learn a lot from our school experiments. I definitely want to be a scientist when I grow up. So I'm going to give you one more example of what these would look like. So the claim in this case would be science is my favorite subject in school. That's the author's own opinion statement. Science is the best subject. For the reasons and evidence, well, the author is saying that science is the favorite school subject because he gets to do cool things like experiments, the experiments are really fun, and he learns a lot. 
and he wants to be a scientist when he grows up. So I kind of synthesized that information. I kind of summarized, put it together by saying, science is the author's favorite school subject. The experiments are fun. The author learns a lot from them. The author wants to be a scientist when he or she grows up. So this is not credible. It's because it's in first person and it's a bunch of opinion statements. So it's not based on a bunch of facts. It's just saying, oh, I enjoy this. I enjoy that. I learn a lot. I want to be this when I grow up. These are all opinion statements, which makes this not credible. It's not based on facts or research. So now we get to delve into some independent practice. OK, so now you get to write down the claim, reasons, evidence, and credible or not credible, as well as why. Let's read our passage together. Ladybugs can have a variety of different colors. Although one may typically think of a ladybug as red with black dots, there are actually a few types of ladybugs. Most are reddish orange, while some can be yellow, white, brown, or even pink. So first you can write down on your piece of paper the word claim, and then write down what you think the author's claim is. I'll let you pause the video and do that. After that, you're going to write down reasons slash evidence on your paper. And then you're going to write what you think the author's reasons and evidence were based on this passage. So you can pause your video and do that. After that, you're going to write down either credible or not credible on your paper. And then you're going to write down why you think it's either credible or not credible. Remember that you can use your research to find the answers. Awesome, so now let's go over the answers. So the claim is that ladybugs can come in many different colors. That's the author's statement. Then we have for reasons and evidence, ladybugs can be reddish orange, yellow, white, brown, or pink. And again, this is taken directly from the passage. It provides all these different colors that the ladybug can be. For whether it's credible or not credible, this one is credible because if you researched it, then you found that based on research, Ladybugs really can be all these different colors. They can be reddish orange like the picture, or they can be yellow, white, brown, or even pink. Let's try another one. Identify whether this passage is credible. Okay, I found a giant hermit crab the other day. Don't believe me? Check out this picture I took of it. This mammoth of a hermit crab was just sitting on the beach right by the waves. I scooped him right up and put him inside my sand bucket. I brought him to the hotel and measured him. He was a little over two feet long. So you can write down on your piece of paper, claim, reason slash evidence, and credible, not credible, and why. So I'll let you pause the video and do that. So after you're all done with that, you get to write down what you believe the author's claim was based on the passage, the reasons and evidence that the author gave based on the passage, and then you get to research these to find out whether this passage really is credible or is not credible and why. So I'll let you have some time. You can pause the video and do that. All right, so now let's go over our answers. So the claim, based on this passage, I found a giant hermit crab the other day. The claim is, I found a giant hermit crab. That's what the author is claiming. That's his statement. For the reasons and evidence, based on this passage, the author is saying that, well, when the author measured the crab, the crab was a little over two feet long. And in addition, the crab in the picture was huge. And then for credible, not credible, why? This would not be credible. So if you researched this and you researched how big hermit crabs can be, you would realize that hermit crabs are really only about two to six inches long. So to say like the author did that he was a little over two feet long would actually kind of be an exaggeration. It wouldn't really be true. So this is not a credible passage. Okay, so just to review what we went over, we talked about how credibility is whether a claim is trustworthy and reliable. 
Then we talked about claims supported by reasons and evidence are true statements, whereas claims not supported by reasons and evidence are often opinion statements without supporting facts or research. And it's important to know that just because something looks credible doesn't mean that it actually is. And when in doubt, it's important to research it. This helps us distinguish between things like fake news and real news. Fake news is presented as accurate, but it really isn't. So for this one right here, some questions to think about. What is the author's claim? What are the author's reasons and evidence? And is this credible? Why or why not? So we've got breaking news, multicolored roses found in LA. Roses of many colors growing in abundance in Los Angeles, say residents. So is this, what is this author's claim? What is the author's statement that he's trying to say? Well, this one could be something like multicolored roses were found growing naturally in Los Angeles. That's taken right from here and also right from here, the title. Then for the author's reasons and evidence, well, the residents are saying this. There are multiple Los Angeles residents who are saying that they saw a lot of these roses growing naturally. And as to the question of whether this is credible or not credible, this is not credible. So if you research this, you would find that this is not credible because research shows that colorful roses are artificially colored by splitting the stem and dipping each part of the stem in different colors of water. The colors are then drawn into the petals, so these colors really are not natural, which means this is actually fake news. Okay, let's look at one more. So questions to think about for this is what is the author's claim? What are the author's reasons and evidence? And is it credible? Why or why not? So we've got breaking news, foster pets find homes. Foster pets are being adopted throughout the U.S. by quarantined families. So, on your piece of paper, I want you to write down what you think the author's claim is, then what you think the author's reasons and evidence are, and finally, whether you think this is credible or not, and why or why not. So you can pause the video and do that. Awesome. So let's check our work. So the author's claim is that foster pets are finding homes throughout the U.S., taken directly from this. What are the author's reasons and evidence? Well, the author says that this is happening throughout the U.S. and that quarantined families are adopting pets. And the picture also gives us additional evidence of a dog with its new owner. So this is credible because it is realistic widespread, meaning that it's not just in one specific area, rather it's a lot of people doing this. And it makes sense. It doesn't really like defy logic or anything. And it's confirmed by other sources. So you may have heard of other people adopting pets, foster pets. And so also based on research, you can see that this is indeed accurate. So it is credible. So just to recap our lesson, we went over claims and supporting evidence. We had our agenda of reviewing vocabulary, going over some examples of arguments, claims, reasons, and evidence, like the recycling one at the beginning of the lesson. Then we identified supported versus unsupported claims, also identifying whether passages are credible or uncredible, and finally did a breaking news activity to identify whether the articles were credible or not credible. So we did indeed accomplish our goal of evaluating the main points, reasons, and evidence in an argument and distinguishing between supported and unsupported claims. We also went over our vocabulary terms of persuade, argument, claim, reasons, and evidence. And if you would like to, you can always pause the video and write these down as well. We also talked about credibility, which is whether a claim is trustworthy and reliable, as well as the difference between claims supported by reasons and evidence, which are true, versus claims not supported by reasons and evidence, which can be opinion statements without facts or research to back them up. So I hope that you enjoyed today's sixth grade ELA lesson. I know that I certainly did, and I will see you later.